Hi there! This tutorial will walk you through making the most basic of pattern for the phoenix hoop and try to explain how the hoop interprets them. If you get confused, don't worry. Keep watching. We'll walk you through step by step. First, here's a very high level explanation. The hoop reads bitmap.bmp from the internal memory. Each pixel in the image represents an LED in the hoop. Ideally, the image would be however many pixels wide as the number of LEDs your hoop contains. So if you had a 100 LED hoop, a pattern that fit your hoop perfectly would be 100 pixels wide. For simplicity's sake, we're only going to use a 10 by 10 image. But that's okay, it will work out just fine on your hoop. If a pattern isn't wide enough to fill all the LEDs in your hoop, it's smart enough to fill the rest of the hoop by repeating the pattern. Many of the most eye-catching patterns are very basic, small patterns like this. The hoop displays patterns one row at a time, starting from the top of the image and then moves to the next until it reaches the end, where it goes back to the first row. So a diagonal line in from the top left of the pattern to the bottom right will appear as chasing LEDs as the pattern is displayed one row at a time. Sounds confusing, right? Hopefully, as we go step by step through this tutorial, it will make more sense. I'm going to use the free image editor at pixlr.com for this tutorial. Photoshop is my favorite tool for this, but PixLR does a great job and it's free. So first go to pixlr.com forward slash editor forward slash. Okay, now you're gonna create a new image with a height of 10 pixels and a width of 10 pixels. Then press the OK button. Next, create a black background using the fill bucket. This should be the starting point for all patterns. Black backgrounds turn the LEDs off. First, select the brush tool. Then we're gonna change the brush size to one pixel. Select hard tip. This makes a nice solid pixel rather than slightly faded. Without this, the system tries to blend it with the surrounding pixels and it will appear too dim. Now click the color selection area. This will open the color selection dialog. Pick a color, any color. I used red for this example. Then press OK to close the dialog. Now for a closer look at the pattern we created. This illustration is just to help explain how the hoop interprets the image. As you can see, I've labeled each row and column to show you how the image will appear on the hoop as the image is scanned from top to bottom. Here's a close-up of the first frame of the pattern. On this frame, the first LED of the hoop will be red. LEDs 2 through 10 will be off. Since the pattern is only 10 pixels wide, but the hoop has many more LEDs, the pattern will repeat. So LEDs 11 will be red, and then 12 through 20 will be off. This will repeat all the way around to fill up the entire hoop. This is how the first frame will appear once the row has been repeated to fill the hoop. Great, that's it. You've now successfully created your first pattern. Be sure to save it, click File, then Save. And you want to be sure that you select BMP, large but non-destructive, as your image format. Click OK, and it will prompt you with a save dialog. Please note, pattern names should only contain letters, numbers, underscores, and dashes. Do not use spaces or periods within the pattern name, but use an underscore instead. From here, you can either save it to your computer or directly to your hoop. If you're saving directly to the hoop, you'll need to plug in your hoop and turn it on. After 30 seconds or so, your computer should recognize that the hoop has been plugged in, and a removable drive will show up labeled Phoenix. Click on the Phoenix removable drive and save the image to the root level of the device. The Phoenix does support subfolders, but it's more confusing and a little difficult to navigate into them with only the keychain remote. So again, to keep things simple, just save it to the root for now. Here are a few examples of patterns that are a bit more detailed. The beauty of this hoop is that you can get as creative as you want. Play around, see what works. It's going to take some time to learn the process, but once you've got it down, trust me, 
It's addicting and amazing. Also note, the Phoenix can only support up to about 220 patterns in one folder. So if you add enough patterns, you might get a warning that the pattern couldn't be saved to the hoop. If this happens, you'll need to remove a few of your least favorite patterns before you can save any new ones. This tutorial shows PC-based format, but Mac users will have the same basic instructions. After you have saved the pattern, eject the hoop drive and turn off your hoop. Then reboot it to see your lovely patterns in action. You can review all of these instructions on a PDF version from the tutorial section of our Phoenix page at www.spin-fx.com. Good luck and have fun creating your unique patterns.